Alright, what's going on guys? Try back again. I'm going to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my video review for Breaking Bad Season 5, Episode 9, the premiere of the second half of Season 5. This one is called Blood Money. And as always, my reviews do contain spoilers, so for anyone who has not seen the premiere of the final section of episodes or the final part of season five, episode nine, uh, you may or may not want to watch this. So I was ready, had my Heisenberg shirt on, <laughs> good to go, uh, ready to go. Uh, okay, so this one for me felt like an event, man. This episode was awesome. Now, I, I must say that at the beginning of the episode, you know, it was, it was really exciting to start. Then there was a bit of a slow part in the middle, and I was thinking, oh, this is you know, the pacing and stuff has slowed down quite a bit, and, um, you know, I'm starting to think, maybe this isn't season premiere worthy. And then the end of the episode came, and the, the climax, of course, where we see the face-off between Hank and Walt, D. Norris, Brian Cranston. Oh, man, that was exciting. That was some of the most intense stuff I've ever seen. I mean, the build-up, from the series all the way through up until this point where uh, Hank and Walt, Hank finally realizes who Walter is, of course, in, in Gliding Overall, the uh, episode, the finale from last season. And we finally get to see the confrontation between the two of them. So, wow, that was intense and exciting. So let's start from the beginning of the episode and then we'll get uh, we'll get to all the good stuff at the end. So the episode starts off and uh, we have some kids skateboarding in a pool and we're like what's this? What the heck is this? And uh, yet again they decided to go with the uh, out of chronological order uh, scene before the uh, intro, before the you know the intro credits and um, for Breaking Bad and again I loved it. I love every time they take a sequence out of chronological order and they put it in. This isn't the first one we've seen. We saw the other one with Walt at the diner where he's got the full head of, uh, of hair, messy hair, he's by himself, he's got the huge uh, machine gun in the trunk of his car and uh, this week we see him actually go back to his house which was cool because it's destroyed. You've got the uh, spray paint in yellow of Heisenberg on the wall and um, essentially he goes in and, and he he takes off a, a light uh, switch cover and uh, or no not a light switch cover was it was it a light switch cover or was it a power I forget power or light switch one of the two uh, connector and he takes that off and then he takes out that uh, that little um, what would it be called um, little glass container for whatever it was inside there I know I forget exactly what that was inside there I don't think it was the ricin Somebody comment below, let me know, because I don't remember, it's been a while since I've seen a lot of those episodes, um, what exactly that was that he had hidden there and why he felt like it was necessary to go back and get it. But uh, aside from that, so that, that was cool, and I really liked when uh, the neighbor, uh, let's see, what was her name? Carol. <laughs> so Carol sees him and she's just like terrified and to the point where she drops whatever she was holding, was it groceries or whatever, and after he says, hello Carol, then she just drops it and just was like the terror on her face. Now I really liked after that the intro credits when you, you see him again and he sees her and she's all nice and friendly and you know, hi Walt and, and all that good stuff, nice friendly neighbor to, to the point where um, now or afterwards out of chronological order scene, she's terrified of him. So that must mean that essentially after that skip or whatever is going to happen at the end of the series, um, you know, everybody, it must become public for her to know about it that he was Heisenberg. It must become public that he was the one who did all of these things. So somehow, word has to get out. They've got the cops, it, you know, it's kind of like, it, it kind of tells us that Hank is not going to be able to keep this under wraps and let this just die um, with, with Walt. He, you know, people are going to find out and it's going to become common knowledge to the point where even his neighbors know who he is based on her reaction. So that was kind of cool and a little uh, little piece of info there for what we can expect to see afterwards with, you know, maybe some some of it being released in public and maybe a warrant out for his arrest or whatever and news coverage and things of that nature. Uh, plus the question of what exactly happened to the house. Was it the cops that just stripped the house? 
would they have put spray paint on the wall? I mean, I don't think they would have spray painted the wall Heisenberg, police officers. No, I wouldn't think so. So it'll be interesting to see in the final seven episodes what happens with that and, um, you know, who exactly did that. Now, I don't think there was any fire marks like as if the house was burned or anything like that. Uh, it just looked like it was vandalized and, and gutted, basically, of everything. So maybe it's both. Maybe somebody attacked and did the spray paint thing, and then maybe also the police um, gutted it out and took everything as evidence. So I'll be excited to see what happens with that, and uh, I really like when they show us things like that because it gets you thinking, and, and that's always fun when it gets you thinking, and a lot of fun when they put that out of chronological order. So the intro I thought was great. Then, of course, we pick up where we left off at the end of um, the last episode or last season, more like it, um, with gliding overall where Hank comes out of the bathroom and he takes the, the book with him. And uh, he reacted. Uh, the most interesting thing about this episode and what was going to happen right after is what is Hank going to do? I've done videos talking about this, just speculating, doing predictions about what we thought or what I thought um, you know, Hank was going to do afterwards. So the direction that they go with it, you know, him being sick, wanting to leave, you know, I, I feel like it was, you know, it, it was natural. It made sense. It's, it's probably what he would. Because the thing is, is, uh, you know, he would want to just basically, he would be feeling sick at, of that reali because of that realization that, uh, that there's a good chance he's got the writing right there, right in front of him, that uh, this is Heisenberg, you know. <laughs> he has become Heisenberg. And, um, you know, with that, he, of course, wants to leave. And uh, I like the panic attack scene. That was really realistic that he would just you know because you think about how close he not only was he was he family with Skyler and all that but as the series goes through we get the sense that you know not everybody's family is that close but they were really close you know they probably thought of each other as almost best friends kind of close to it you know Hank probably would have thought of Walt as like a best friend you know with with how close they were the families the cancer you know uh, having the kids stay over and all these different uh, types of things that have happened we can we get the feeling that this is not a distant family this is a really close knit tight family so he has his panic attack and crashes his car well sort of um, has to go to the hospital and basically doesn't go back to work at all in this episode uh, he's working from home, essentially, or working, just going over the case and deciding what he's going to do. So everything with Hank in this episode was great. So, so that was all good stuff. I enjoyed all of that. Uh, the parts with Jesse and uh, Skinny Pete and uh, Badger <laughs> were kind of funny, but you kind of feel for Jesse. He's, he's, he's guilt-stricken at this point. He's, um, you know, he's got all this money, but it's blood money. He feels bad about it. And another great part was the dialogue between him and Walt on whether or not, uh, see, he doesn't know that Walt killed Mike because, Mike, well, Walt was the only one there. So, you know, he's kind of, rat he's kind of uh, using logic and deductive reasoning to say, hey, okay, if Mike just left and Walt killed all those guys, all of Mike's guys, then, you know, Walt would be looking over his shoulder all the time, guaranteed. So he kind of knows that, you know, he must be dead because otherwise Walt would not be just, you know, going back to living his normal life and everything being kosher. He knows that Walt must have killed him. And then Walt lies afterwards and he kind of looks over and you can see him in the camera. Great acting. You can kind of tell that he knows. Uh, and then afterwards, of course, going to Saul or, well, before that was going to Saul, which is always fun to see Saul, and uh, him throwing, throwing the money uh, as he's driving down the, uh, down the street, just giving it away to people that are less fortunate. Which is nice, but you know it's kind of like he's a loose cannon. You don't know where he's going to go, what he's going to do, where they're going to go with him at this point. Um, seeing as how he, you know, he basically knows that Walt's lying and that he did kill Mike. So I enjoyed all of that. I thought that was all really good stuff. So that's with Jesse. Uh, in terms of Skyler and Lydia, that was that was a fun scene. The uh, the Lydia scene where she visits the car wash and she's she's just a greedy bitch. You know, she's not <laughs> like all the money they've made so far. She's complaining about the quality of the product they're pumping out because Walt's basically like, well, I left you in charge of, it's yours now, you can have it, right? It's your, it's your operation, I'm out, right? So, you know, that was all, that was all good stuff and, you know, it's kind of, um, it, you know that that's going somewhere. That, we haven't seen the end of, of Lydia, I'm sure, or, or the end of, uh, of that whole side of Walt's life. You see, the thing is with guys like that, when they get in that deep with, with operations and things, things of that nature, they can't just step away, you know, it keeps trying to pull them back in, pull them back in. And the thing with greed, like Lydia, with greed, obviously, 
you can never you can never get enough with regards to buying stuff or with regards to making money no matter how much a person makes a lot of people they still it doesn't matter they want to make more they want to keep going they want to you know millions and millions Walt's smart enough to say hey you know we've got more money here than we'll ever need we just live our lives normally and everything should be fine and he walks away from it so it'll be interesting to see afterwards what happens with Lydia I like the scene with Skylar it's like you know oh, Walt get out of my territory stay out of my territory thing with a car wash Stay out of my car wash. So, which is basically what she said, told her. I thought we were going to see a chick fight. And I didn't realize how big Skyler is. Jesus, she'd smoke Lydia. <laughs> Be no, no contest. You'd slap her around like nothing. So that was all fun stuff, and I enjoyed all of that. Okay, so that's everything else, basically. Sum it all up. Now, the ending. So the ending was, oh, man, so intense. When you see um, Hank, and then Walt just rolls up, you know, gets out of the car and he's like all nice to the other the other cops that are they're that helping out with Hank bringing them uh, the evidence and stuff like that and uh, you know you can just feel the intensity just building just building there up until the point when he actually walks in they're talking and yeah you know you know everything they're acting like everything's kosher both of them then Walt before he goes to leave he pulls out the bug that he found lets it know that hey you know I know you're you're on to me type of thing and uh, the acting, the scene, the, the punch was great when, when, when Hank punches him, you know, uh, really good stuff. And, and, and the most exciting part is, okay, well, what's going to happen now? What's Hank going to do? You know, and uh, then Heisenberg, I won't call him Walt anymore at the end, like the greatest part, I would say, of the whole episode is when Hank says to him that he doesn't know who he is anymore. You know, he doesn't feel like he, he knows him anymore at all. You know, like he, like he has no idea who this person is he's looking at. This is not... Walter White uh, anymore. This is Heisenberg. <laughs> so, and then Walt says, I wrote it down just for, for sake of review. Uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, then maybe your best course of action would be to tread lightly. Very intense scene, very intense. Dean Norris looking at Brian Cranston back. And, you know, it closes the garage. When he closed the garage, you knew it was going down. And, uh, wow. Uh, oh, also, Dean, uh, or Hank, asks uh, Walt to, to bring the kids here, and then, then I'll think about it. And, and Walt's like, absolutely not. So, <laughs> oh, man, what a cliffhanger at the end when they're just standing there in the garage just looking at each other. That was an amazing cliffhanger. So, an awesome episode. Really enjoyed the ending of this one. Uh, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I was going to rate it lower because it, it's kind of a season premiere, but it's not. You know, when, when you have a season premiere, season finale, mid-season finale, you're, you're looking at, you know, kind of like a harder harder criteria. You're going to mark it because you know it's going to be something special, better than the regular episodes. Um, but for this one, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like season 6, episode 1. But it's really season five, episode nine, because they decide to split up the season, which I'm glad they did now because we haven't seen all this stuff yet. So we're st starting to see the epic conclusion. And um, we got about two months left of Breaking Bad before it's finally done and over. Uh, so we'll see where they go with it. I'm interested to see what happens with, uh, with the Lydia thing because you know that's not going away. Um, but especially the Jesse thing, being uh, losing his mind and grief stricken and, and losing it, that's good stuff too. Um, can't wait to see what happens with that. And then, of course, the big one, Dean, uh, Dean Norris, Hank, and um, uh, Brian Cranston, Walt, just what's going to happen with the two of them. So let me know what you guys thought about the episode, what you think is going to happen next with the two of them, what direction you think it's going to go. I mean, story-wise, because of the ending of the series, we can see that Walt uh, obviously uh, has, has not been under arrest or doesn't seem to be uh, locked up, of course. Um, we'll see. Does will Hank, you know, hear his plea to just let him die in peace and let him just, you know, like the six months the cancer's back? Is he telling the truth about that? Maybe he's not. Maybe it is in remission. Maybe he beat it. I don't know with the chemo, or maybe it is back and he really only does have six months. We'll see, man. We'll see. So anyway, very exciting stuff. I'm giving this episode uh, Blood Money a nine out of ten. Thought it was great. And uh, like I said, let me know what you guys think about all those developments. And uh, what you think is going to happen next? Big time cliffhanger. Can't wait until next Sunday. Going to have to watch the end of this episode again because it's just so intense, so exciting. The dialogue and everything. Wow. Love it. Breaking Bad. Can't go wrong. It's a shame that the show is going to be ending soon. But, uh, man, it's uh, 
It's a great show. Really great show. Anyway, I'll call it here. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you for the next one. This is Trev, and I'm saying peace.